Hi, I'm Keith Lundholm, and I'm with New Vintage Automotive out of Cookville, Tennessee. And today I'm going to be showing you my collection of Opal Specialty Tools made by Kent Moore. And behind me, this is my collection. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get to it. So the Kent Moore Opal Specialty Tools are basically what dealerships were sent back in the 60s and 70s to work on these vehicles that they sold. And basically they were sent these tools automatically, whether they wanted them or not. If you were a Buick dealer, you got everything for a, you know, a Buick Skylark to, to completely service that vehicle. Uh, engine, transmission tools, you name it, you got it. That was part of their package. So when a mechanic is, you know, or was wor working on one of these cars, you had the factory service manuals that they went through. And you could, in these procedures, it lists all the Kentmore tools that you need to do a specific job. Now, sometimes they had a nice layout. Like here is the uh, rear differential tools. And it has it all kind of listed out for you. And it's a lot of hunting through to, to find these. Also, when, say, uh, uh, some new stuff was coming out, Kent Moore would send a, a packet to the service manager where he could... You know, basically, here's a, here's a mini catalog brochure, and you can kind of see this one, being it's uh, labeled 1969, that's kind of a key time, because the set that I have is from 68 for the 1.9 engines. Well, in 69, Opal came out with the automatic transmission for the U.S. cars. So... They knew they were going to have to have tools, so they'd send out a flyer. So this is majority. This is a majority of your automatic transmission tools, and and then there was order forms as well. So a service manager say, okay, yeah, we're you know we're probably going to need this. Now a lot of these tools are the same as a turbo 350 transmission, so there was a plus to them is they 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 fit a lot of vehicles. Also, Kent Moore had some master catalogs. This one is from 1970. Um, I have dog-eared through pretty much where all the Opal specific tools are. And um, that's kind of one of the tools I've used to find those specific tools or at least find a number for it so I'd have something to search on. Um, so I, I've been collecting these tools for years, and um, I don't have them all. I, uh, there's a lot of tools that I don't have, that a friend will have, or there's tools I just don't care about. Because uh, a slide hammer, I've got a slide hammer, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, but yeah, hey, if I come across it, it is the Kentmore tool, I would probably buy it. So I'm guilty, but uh, so we're going to go through the, the the box sets. I'm going to go over some custom tools I've built, um, and tell you a few pros and cons about some of these original tools. Uh, we do use these tools; uh, they are not for loan. So please don't ask. I will not loan them. I will not rent them. I will not sell them. Except for a few, I, I might sell, you know. I, I, I could be talked into that. Uh, then if you break it, well, you bought it, so it doesn't matter. So we'll go over these here in this next segment. So as I was saying before, this is an actual 1968 Opal box set. I, I had the lid and everything for it. It's, I, I keep them up because I'll actually put this in a whole toolbox drawer. And with the transmission box set, which I'll go over here in a minute. But starting out, uh, this 
this set has all the 1.9 differential tools. So it's got the, I call it an arbor, but it's to measure off of. And then I have the uh, little height block plunger. I've seen people who actually make this, and I thought, oh, that's kind of crazy, but. Um, the, uh, and, and then the other tools adjacent. The only tool I actually don't have with the rear end tools is this 21691-7, which is a hardware kit. Basically, it was a square headed bolt and a nut. So I just, I, I made it. All you have to do is for preloading your bearings when you're setting this up is to tighten this up and have enough drag with your, your uh, inch pound torque wrench to, to do that. So uh, I have some reamers for the, for the head, all different oversizes. Uh, these are brand new, they're still in the wax. Uh, I'll never use them, uh, don't care, but I do have them. Um, this is the um, clutch alignment tool and what is it, the pinion bearing, crank, pilot bearing uh, installer as well. Then this is a uh, clamshell bearing, bearing puller um, and this is actually an OTC tool. It's made by OTC but it is identical to the one in the manual, and I preferred it over the Kent Moore one. So I, I kind of I think that even in this manual, you'll see some of the tools look a little different. And I think because I used a, an actual other tool and pictured it in, in, in the manual. Um, I might be wrong on that, but the Kent Moore one does not look like the one in the manual. This is a rear seal installer. And this is actually a two-part deal. It's a 22928-2. And I guess part one is this inner sleeve, which is originally plastic. But um, I only know of one that is in existence. And I made this out of aluminum, and it works great. So, I, you know, sometimes you can improve on these tools and, and make them better. Uh, the, the one was originally like a real thin plastic and I mean it just almost disintegrated. So I made my own. Um, these are other differential tools, race installers. And it comes with, a, you have this uh, 8092 screws into them and, and then you can hammer your races in or, or press them in, whichever you prefer. Uh, th this tool will work with a lot of your bushing tools. You know, this is a side bearing, uh, carrier bearing installer. Um, I have a pinion seal installer. Then these are transmission. Um, basically, these take off the detent plugs on the top of a four speed transmission. And then this little one is for the early four speed to take the pin out of the speedometer gear housing. And those, those hook on to the 7004 slide hammer and they show these to be sold as a pair. So only naturally, this way, yeah, I got a pair of them. Then there's a speedometer gear remover for the early ones. I have used this on the later rear ends too because the speedometer gear was stuck in there and I, I couldn't really pry it out. So hook it on the slide hammer and pop it right out. Um, a barrel, barrel sleeve remover um, or barrel spline remover. Now this tool, I've seen one at Harbor Freight that looks just like it. Now, whether dimensionally it's, it's correct or not, I, I don't know. So you might want to check, but I have seen that. Also, I want to say I've seen one of these at Harbor Freight too. 
Not that I'm recommending Harbor Freight tools, but this is a early rear end bearing and seal remover. Basically, you kind of you kind of turn this to the side, slide it in, and then wiggle it around till it hooks that bearing, tighten this down and put a slide hammer to it and pop it. Now, I don't have the slide hammer for this, but I've got a slide hammer that adapts to this, so I'm not necessarily looking to buy a slide hammer from Kentmore Tools. Uh, I'll take my, I got a 10 pounds slide hammer, it works great. Um, these are uh, bearing or needle bearing installers for your four speed transmission. It's just a special shaft that's made perfect length to go in there to hold those. And I, I use the heck out of this. I think this is the second one I've had. This one was a, like a brand new one I opened up. And then this, this is a main shaft installer. It's, it's kind of hollowed out, but you can use it on the press to uh, put on gears and stuff. Then the 22933 is an engine timing cover, oil sling cover. And all it is is so you can run the 1.9 engine and not get oil everywhere. Well, I, I don't have the metal one that was the original. I, I've got this plastic one. I, I don't even remember where I got it from, but it actually seals really good on there. And uh, I, I like it better. So somebody manufactured this. I, I forget who, but I think it is a German tool. Um, this is a front crank seal installer for your timing cover. You just put it on, put your crank bolt in, tighten it up, and it pushes it the seal most of the way. It doesn't put it all the way in there. That's the only thing I don't like about it. But uh, it, it'll get it started, so you can you can hammer it in or tap it in. Uh, is probably the correct wording. Then this is a transmission reverse gear jack bolt and I see these on eBay quite often there's probably two or three on there right now and basically you put it in the case and you turn it and it pops that get that that shaft out for the reverse speed and then I have this uh, this is an installer for the rear end for the barrel spline it screws over the shaft and then you you tighten this on it's a it's a roller bearing that safely pushes on that sleeve so you don't distort anything now i've had it where guys went crazy on this tool and you know so i've got another shaft that's it's broken i keep it as a reminder you know to you know do what they say with these tools or or they're not going to last and they're hard to get um these, uh, some of these slots are for these uh, triple square tools. I, I've got similar ones, but I don't have any of the Kent Moore ones. Can't find them. They probably went in like mechanics toolboxes and went home. Or when they quit, they were gone. Um, these are side, side carrier bearing pullers and an adapter kind of goes on the end of it I hope you can see that and and that goes into the bearing or the rear rear chunk case to safely pull those bearings out um, this is a this is the spline holder now originally this is the original tool but originally this only had like two or three teeth to hold that on, and 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 sometimes you're really torquing down the um, that uh, crush sleeve, and so what I did is I just welded on. I cut off a torque tube, an extra one, you know, and welded it on. It's been great ever since. So no need to worry about that. Um, I got a brake caliper tool clamp for taking them apart I um, I don't have a Kentmore steering wheel puller but I do have a 
I have a special bushing that I machined out of aluminum to protect the 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 threads on the steering shaft. And that's been great. This is the press plate for transmission stuff and some maybe some rear differential stuff, but uh, kind of a selector hole you put it in the press plate. And uh, oil sending unit wrench. Now these numbers start like 21 number, 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 uh, then go to 22, 23, 24, 25. Opal kind of stops at 24, 25, and 75. It, it kind of tells you the age of the tool, but not, not always in most, in a lot of cases, but a lot of your 216 tools are Opals. 217s are like um, 1.1 Opal and, and so on. But that, that's not a total general rule. This is the 1.1 barrel spline holder, holder wrench. And then this is the, this is for a 1.1 arbor to measure. And you can kind of see this is still in wax. I've never used it. One day I will. Uh, another rear differential tool for carrier play uh, measuring tool. This is for a uh, torque tube bearing installer. I think it's for a 1.1 torque tube bearing now. I'm not, I'm not sure it'll work with a, a 1.9. I don't know. I've never used it. I've got it. I just never used it. Then this is a Kent Moore Opal Cadet carburetor tool set. I guess for basically setting your float and one other idle setting or you know some kind of something to stick in there to say okay yeah that's where you want to be. Maybe a fast idle circuit. Then uh, I've got some other bushings. These are race installers and specific things. These are going to be for um, probably that's for the transmission which I'm, I'm about to go into that box set and um, and discuss. So that'll be on our next segment. Okay so I got some more seal installers. This one is for an automatic transmission I believe. I didn't go over the rear um, rear seal installer for the four speed or the pinion seal installer. I mean installers installers, but a word of caution is do not use a regular hammer on these seal installers. They won't handle it. Ask me how I know is that right there, okay? I, and actually I think I did this with a soft face mallet. It, it's not so much that it, these are old. And, and they're only going to take so much abuse. It could have been cracked when I got it. Uh, and, and just me using it for no, normal service, I, I caused that. So I think that's probably like a crank and a seal installer for a 1.1. One one. Uh, I, I forget. I'll, end up buy, I'll find another one and buy it. I just don't want to pay so much for it. And I probably won't use it a whole lot. So in this transmission kit, it comes with a, like a separate kit that I've got the cover for it. I keep it over there. Um, but this fits, this will all fit in pretty much one tool drawer I've got in, in my in my box. And this this is uh, for the automatic transmission install, the bushings, uh, bushing remover, and and different you know for the uh, basically a uh, Pump, pump bushing for the oil pump. I've got all kinds of transmission compressors. I've got this tool. Once you once you've put a transmission together, you just put this on top before your bell housing goes in, and and this measurement. 
it, it'll hit, you tighten it down, and then you measure this thickness and it tells you what shim to use. Because there was different selective shims for your automatic transmission. So, simple tool, probably wasn't worth buying, but, um, you know, if you're going to do those transmissions, then, yeah, it's, it's worth having. Mod vacuum modulator wrench. These are like, you know, for installing clutch sets and, and things. Um, I got different plates, different different press plates. Some are split. Uh, I believe this one. Well, not actually this one, but some of these actually have uh, a holder to to hold the plate uh, or the two halves. I've got these. These are 1.1 tools. So 21721 one. This is for like axle bearings. Uh, taking those bearings on and off. I've got the, um, I got an arbor plate for those as well. I've got four different plates. But this transmission kit, the only thing non, really non transmission, or it comes with the Opal Cadet engine, uh, engine support stands. And what these do is uh, so you can pull out the front suspension and leave the engine in the car. Which on a Cadet, they're all built in, so if you're going to do that, it's just as easy to pull the engine with the transmission. Uh, they made these for the GT as well, which I'll show you. Uh, this is a torque converter alignment tool. And then this is a 1.1 four-speed standard shift shifter remover. You just push it down, turn it and it'll pop right out. I have never thought I'd use that tool. I have actually used that two or three times now. The 24850 is a tool that is actually being reproduced now and there's good reason. This this goes on your on your cylinder head when you've got your engine together and it'll point to a dot when you have your your cam timing in line to put your distributor in at number one and so it'll go right in and it'll point at that dot when you got it in the right location now I've got the same it's the same number tool but if you can see it's different it's shorter on the legs and then, if you can look, that pin is real small compared to the one nine. So I really don't know what that's for, opal wise. It, it will not actually fit on a, an opal head with the uh, the gear in place. It, it, it hits, and um, so I don't know if this is. Possibly for a, a one seven. I mean, we didn't really get those here, and I know it's not a one point one. So, don't know. Maybe somebody watching the video actually knows. I, I have no clue. I, but I've kept it because it's a Kentmore tool. I mean, why would I get rid of that? So. So door hinge pin removers. Now this is not a Kent Moore. This is a Hazet, which is a German. I think it's basically the German version of Kent Moore um, over there. So they, but Hazet still makes tools and and they're a little more common. But um, the Kent Moore hinge pin tool for the cadets. This thing now this isn't. This isn't the actual pin that came with this. Uh, uh, but that's how bad... They, they all get bent up like that. These are junk. And I've, 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 I tried this one time. I broke the armor. I mean, it, it just won't cut it. Th these are okay, but even these... I mean, basically, you, you know, you, you hook them like this. Uh, or or you, you put it in and you hammer it down. And you, you risk... It, messing up a door or something 
Um, we use a pneumatic. Uh, I got a pneumatic uh, air hammer tool, and I got a Matco air hammer that's a long stroke, and that thing will pop them door hinges out. I don't care if they're rusted and bent; it'll pop them right out. So we use that. But oh, uh, you know, I'll keep it for reference. Uh, this is a uh, this is an axle puller to go on the bigger slide hammer and I, I think I got two of these I, I don't know how I got two of them but sometimes I buy stuff and it come with one so um, another 21701 this is going to be this is either a mat something with a master cylinder if I recall um, installer for a master cylinder and then I have a 1.1 clutch installer, so it's a lot smaller. Um, but I don't like using this to install the uh, pilot bearings or the pinion bearings in the crank. Uh, it, it's got too much of a taper. I think it messes them up. And this is a remover for, of that bearing for a 1.1. Um, this is some kind of clutch seal installer for a 1.1 and this is what I believe yeah is the actual pilot bearing installer for the crank then I have some other stuff this is this is for like um, a 50 series steering bearing I don't think I know anybody that's ever used one, but it's listed, so we got it. Um, another tool is this 23526-3, which I, I think it's something for an alternator or turn signal. I don't know. I'll never use it, but I will see. Doesn't mean I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just, just saying. Um, pinion seal installer 1.1. I've got this is a this is a, some kind of installer for a 1.1. I, I I vaguely it, yeah it's 1.1 2.1768. Then um, reveal molding. Basically, this is the handle, and it had like six different ones of these, these blades. There's a reveal molding tool for the cadet. The manta, the manta hooks, these are for the front suspension. And then these are the GT, backwards here, these are for the GT engine stands support the engine so you can take the front suspension out or or you know yeah take the you can take the engine cradle off and replace the oil pan gasket without it being in your way so you'll leave the cross member in on that one now i don't have the actual kentmore pliers and snap ring pliers but in my kentmore book these are called true arc um they're walds w-a-l-d-e-s walds true arc pliers and it always tell me the number so these are number 25 so i don't have like kitmore 8876 i've got the actual true arc brand um i got so crazy with this stuff I even look in the pictures because sometimes it doesn't even list the tool or what you need. Um, for instance, Lufkin two inch micrometer. You know, I, I found the actual one that was in the picture. <laughs> so I caught my Kentmore, you know, micrometer. Uh, this is, this is a, this is a transmission seal uh, remover puller. It goes on one of those little small slide hammers. And this is also listed for the 74 and 5 
50 series bumper. Um, basically this pulls the clips for the shocks that are kind of got a little hole to access them. This will fit up in there and you hook it, pop it right down. So they, they sometimes I'll use the same tool for a different application because it makes sense there. Um, a couple tools I got. These are ball joint tools, tie rod end tools. Now I'm going to tell you, 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 you try to pop a tie rod off with one of these, you're either going to break this thing or you're going to just struggle. I mean, I pop the things off with a hammer, you know, good dead blow hammer, pop them off, brass. I mean, I'm going to throw them away anyways. And then this is kind of like a, um, I, I call it more like a, it's a ball joint measuring tool. It's, I think it's like more like a no go, no go gauge. So I, I've never used them. They're, they, there's a couple of these. To, to measure, I think, you know, 50 series, GT, and uh, Cadet. So, this is the 84, or 8001-1234 and 5. But this is the, this is the Kentmore gauge and gauge set for setting up your rear end and read and run out. And, and it is the actual, it is the actual Kent Moore. And, but you see, they, you know, stare it. You know, they use their stuff. Some of the stuff for the 75 fuel injected Opals, I mentioned is a 25 number. And this is a EFI overlay. So you can do a pin out test. And then this is like an idle drop tester. You can plug in and, 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 and run certain tests with a fuel injection. And coming up, I've actually got the computer tester without the overlay. That's correct. Um, these are some, some jumpers for testing. It's a 24419. I forget. I, these might be for testing gauges or something. I, I'm not sh I can't remember. My pack is, is, it's almost melted, you know, it's just from being so old. So that, that's, that's basically most of my tools. This is another seal and star for a 1.1. I had an employee break it. That's what some employees are good for, I guess. Um, this is the big, Pinion, pinion holder just holds the flange in place while you, you, you can tighten or loosen the, uh, the torque tube nut. And, uh, but this also came with a, a puller you could, you could work in. You don't use the puller on the Opal. I mean, this was for all GM applications, so you don't need it. Uh, except for holding that if you really want to get a good torque on it and not have it spin around. Um, I've got other, other 1.1 tools for rear end setups and, and such. But what I want to kind of go over now is a little bit, uh, is a couple of my specialty tools. This is just an old smog pump that I welded a big nut to. So when I'm building an engine and I need to rotate the crank, I can, I can put this in and turn it with a wrench. And uh, the quick and nasty tool I made is basically a crank pulley with a lever. So when I'm building an engine, I'll, I wanna rotate it, I'll put this on and I can spin it around pretty easily. And don't don't have to worry about it. Um, then this is a snap-on tool. This is just for holding a flywheel, and it comes in handy when you're trying to torque down the the flywheel bolts and such. This is a tool I made for taking apart brake calipers. I was I just have a hard time sometimes with air, so I was able to 
I could hook this up to uh, basically a 10,000 pound hydraulic pump. It, it would go in there and I could, I could push that piston out far enough and get you know both sides far enough out where I could I could manually get them out by hand. Uh, this is a tool. I probably I don't build calipers anymore. I used to, but now you can buy them new, and it's kind of like what, why why deal with the liability? But this is from Splendid Parts, and and it's just a little it's just a little press tool to. What it does, it goes over the the caliper piston, where the caliper has some about the face of it has half of it missing, and this is just a put in there, so you protect it from breaking off the other facing of it. it the facing just kind of holds the the lip seal to it, but um, or well, or I'm sorry, the shims in place, and they get they can easily get broken because they're kind of cast iron this is just a tool to put in there i i got a couple and gave to a friend and, uh, i got alignment pins for transmissions and 1.1 stuff i think these are these are for 1.1 as well so that that kind of covers the majority of these tools, and I think I covered pretty much my specialty tools. Now, uh, I always keep a, I always keep an actual transmission shaft. I don't know why I haven't taken the time to pull this bearing, but this is the only way I'll put a clutch in. Uh, I, I with a, a round tool or a plastic tool, it's just kind of iffy. Where I know this is a transmission front shaft. It's perfect, it's gonna fit in there. And you kinda of got some weight to it if you need to move it a little bit and then uh, work it back and forth to see if it fits. Always, always keep distributor shafts for priming a, an engine. And I've got one for a 1.1 1. 1. 1 as well. Just for, just for priming the oil system when I'm ready. So that covers that. I'll show you some of the bigger tools. Okay, this thing is the elusive spring compressor. Now in earlier manuals, it shows these, these bars as Basically, they go into the lower control arm and keep it from falling off the, the suspension. So this is the uh, 21689-1. That, that's what it looks like. For automatic transmissions, I've got one of these things. And it's it's got some weight to it. And what I have is a base mount that I, I keep on a toolbox, a wood top toolbox, and this will slide into it. And I put an automatic transmission on this and rotate it, you know, whichever direction I want. And it it was forever before I bought one of these, but see, I built all my automatic transmissions now, and I I I couldn't live without this thing now. So. Uh, it was a great investment. I use it all the time. This is kind of part of a tool. And, and this is what I was talking about with sometimes these tools that they used at dealerships aren't even listed in the book. But you got to, you, you can kind of look at the pictures and get an idea of, of what it was supposed to be. So, I noticed in the rear differential segment of the service manual, that there, there was a tool I could 
I could see parts of. Like in this picture, I'm not sure you're going to see it, but right up there, it's, it's clamped. And, and then right here, there's a picture of part of the clamp. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> Trying to do this backwards and one-handed. And somewhere in here, there's another picture of it that I felt like, hey, that's, you know, yeah, here, here's another picture showing this apparatus of holding the rear end. I thought, well, you know, yeah, I kind of want something like that. Well, after looking in, in my catalog, this is it. Now, the only thing is I'm missing is the arms, which are like an 8401 that have a clamp. And they list this for an Oldsmobile Tour, an auto or something like that. And this is, uh, this is part one. But see, it's, it's got that same arbor that goes into that transmission mount. And you can rotate a rear end around. And it, it would be handy. It might be cumbersome. But this is called a differential. It's a, let's see, it's a 3289 diff carrier. Holding fixture, Kent Moore. So I'm, I'm still looking for some parts that I could actually make them if I really cared, but I've been doing rear ends the same way I've been doing, so it doesn't really matter. If I get it or not, I get it. Then uh, probably the one, I'm sure there's some other tools I've just forgot about getting, but this is, this is a 25400. And this is a fuel injection analyzer kit. And this one in particular has all of the, I want to say the Dotson Bosch fuel injection testing stuff. And uh, the, yeah, it, it's, it's got the Dotson. It was for like the 240 or 510. I'm not sure exactly which model of theirs was fuel injection but this is a this is an overlay and they had different overlays for Cadillac and there should be one for an Opal so I kind of now I've had a 75 Opal in this shop and I hooked this up and it comes on and it reads stuff but without the uh, the actual overlay, I don't know exactly what it, what it's doing, um, but it was kind of uh, it was neat to play with and test. But it, it does work, and it just works off the power of the fuel injection. And that those fuel injection tools are. You know, those are some of the tools that are kind of hard to find. There, there's a there's a few that I'm still tracking down that I I know I would use. Um, but I, I mean, basically, I, I've I'm pretty much done. I've got I, I mean, like I said, I use these tools. They they they're not just like something I display and put up there. I mean, I've got some of those like old opal tire iron from the 30s and stuff um but we we actually use these tools i don't lend them out because replacing them could take years uh you know might not be a big deal but it might only be a, thir a 20 or 30 dollar tool but getting the opportunity to buy it again is what I worry about so that that's why I don't loan them out um, I don't have time to sit and measure them all and give give you specs but um, you know sometimes I got a chance I'll, I'll go over it and help you out if you want to make it uh, or uh, you know in most cases these tools work great there there's a few that you know I'd say 
you know, there's better ways now. Um, again, like the slide hammer and things like that. Uh, the, these little slide hammers are great. I mean, they're kind of like a nice little size uh, for getting into places. The, um, you know, I, I use the transmission and the differential tools pretty religiously. Uh, I mean, every car we set up, we, we're, we're using those tools. So uh, if you have any questions about Kentmore tools or you've been looking for that one or wanting to know which ones I will sell, you know, hit me up on the video. Um, be glad to help you out. Or contact me at newvintageauto at yahoo.com. And uh, that's probably the easiest way to reach us. Our website is becoming a little defunct and I, it needs to be updated. So uh, with that in mind, I just want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you give me a, a thumbs up. I know it's, I'll do some editing to clean it up a little bit, but it's a one man show today. So thought I'd show y'all kind of, kind of the collection there. Thanks for watching.